Hello and welcome to this new tutorial of MXpert. Today we're going to show you a tutorial in which we're going to compare the model results obtained between equivalent models made with uh, beam type elements and shell type elements in ANSYS APDL. For this purpose we're going to use, uh, well, we're going to look uh, going to ANSYS and we're going to look into, we're going to use a text document that we previously made in which uh, in order to do it faster uh, here we're going to define the element type 1 as 188, the beam 181, the shell. Here we're going to define the material properties, the density 7850 kilograms newton uh, cubic meter, the Young's modulus 2.1 E11, so we're going to define steel, MPRXY is uh, Poisson's coefficient 0 0.3. On this part, we're going to define a, a square, uh, a series of key points that are going to describe a square with 78 uh, millimeters per side, which are going to be the equivalent of the medium fiber, middle fiber from an 80 by 80 by 2 millimeter uh, beam hollow profile um, section. Here we're going to define an, a point that's going to be at 0 0.5 meters. No, we're going to change this. We're going to do it at 1 meter. And here we're going to define the, the lines. We're going to extrude, perform the extrusion. And here also I'm going to change this to 1 meter. So we have a long, long beam in order to analyze the model behavior. Uh, in this part, we do the we create the lines of the section. Then we drag them, so it's extruding them among the last line. That was the line between key points zero and five, which is at one and five. One is at zero zero zero, and five is at zero zero and one meter. Then we're gonna define the sections, the rectangle 80 by 80 by 2 for the beam and 2 millimeters thickness for the shells. Here we're gonna apply the properties to the shells. Here we're gonna create the line, the last line, which is gonna be the our last beam and uh, our actual beam, the beam beam, the beam beam type beam. Then we're gonna define a, a meshing size of 10 millimeters. We're gonna mesh everything and we're gonna plot it so you can see. So we're gonna copy this, we're gonna paste it. And as you can see, if we rotate the model, we have two equivalent beams. We're going to select all. If you look at the lines or uh, if you look at the elements, they're exactly the same, similar uh, similar meshing sizes. This one is made with shell type elements and the right one is made with beam type elements. We're going to take away the E shape option so we don't see the thickness. We're going to go back and looking at the model. And before we start, we're going to apply the restrictions. So the restriction on the beam type element model is going to be uh, dk, p of zero all degrees of freedom on all zero on all the degrees of freedom. And for the and for the shell, we have to obtain a similar restriction. This can be obtained by op, by putting applying a structural displacement on lines restriction. So we're going to select all of these four lines. We're going to hit OK. And you got to also look that despite having the lines secure or restricted, we still need to restrict the corners because they don't technically belong to the lines. So once we have these models equivalent and very similar, we're going to proceed to unmesh the uh, line elements the line element because we want to just simulate one at a time. We're going to do that. We're going to do a solution then, new analysis, modal, OK, analysis option, 10 and 10. We hit OK and solve. This model is going to take a little bit. Nah, not too long. Then we're going to go to general post-processing on the set list where we have the frequencies, as you can see, for these square uh, sections, there's when there's flecting, bending uh, modes like along the x axis and then the y, uh, y axis, the, b the characteristics are the same. So we have two very extremely similar modes that have two different behaviors. That's the case in a couple of them. And if we would have more and more modes, we would probably see that behavior repeated. So we're going to put that aside and we're going to look at the, we're going to take the first mode, 
set one on one, and we're going to plot it, plot the displacement. So this is a flexion mode. The second mode is going to be the same, but in the other direction. The third mode is going to be a twisting. It's, it's going to be a torsional mode. Uh, I'm going to change the disk, the disk scale to 0 0.01 so you can actually see it properly. And it's due to the, the walls are somehow collapsing due to this uh, vibration frequency. I'm going to back, go back to the D scale, D scale 1 auto, uh, D scale auto. And we're going to look at the next modes. The next mode is going to be a flexion mode, another flexion mode. And the sixth one is going to be the second of the torsional modes. So having that, uh, we're going to go to an A plot, A clear, comma all to get rid of the meshing, but it has to be done under preprocessing. We're going to do an A plot, L mesh, comma P. We're going to mesh the line, solo, solve. We're going to solve the model, general post-processing, and we're going to do the set, comma list. So we're going to compare first, we're going to compare the values. Here we have the shell on the left and the beam on the right. As you can see where there's similarities, the first two modes are significantly similar. They have a very, very high uh, degree of similarity. And actually the bending modes are quite similar between these two models. The result for the bending modes as are the 505 and 90 between 520 and 90. Uh, but the beam type elements are not capable of predicting these behaviors belonging to the 472 and the 574, which are the twisting or the torsional effects. If we look at the modes here, the first mode is, it's a bending mode, Pion shall use some. It's a bending mode. If we look at the next one, it's gonna be the same bending mode but in the next direction. And the third one, it's another bending mode which we did not have under the shell. Under the shell, the third mode was uh, that torsional mode that we had to change the D scale. And that's because the, shell, the, the beam type elements are simplified elements that have some limitations, then therefore they're not able to predict all of the behaviors. And with this tutorial, we're gonna find the series, we're gonna finish the analysis of a model, like the simple analysis of model, model analysis of structures. On future, very more, we're more complex simulations. We're gonna make some compar comparisons. And although, well, this is the reality, this is the situation that we have when we're using different types of elements with model analysis. It is not uh, trivial and it's not easy to determine what the reality, what is the reality and what's representative for the reality. The reality at the bottom line, it represents a structure that has to be measured. And in the meantime, we can obtain approximations depending on what type of, uh, of behavior we have. Some, uh, the beam type elements might be good, in other cases, maybe the shell, and maybe, or the most accurate should be the volume type elements, but we have, as, uh, the scene, as, as we've seen in the previous tutorial, the issues with the machine dimension and the sensibility of the results. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial. If you do, uh, please subscribe to our channel and like our videos and share them. Thank you for watching us.